That spicy food hurt your stomach. I don't have a dog. What? What does it have to do with what I said? You said dog. And I don't have one. No, I didn't. And he should never have one. I asked him to watch my dog one time, literally just for an hour. I come back, it's an entirely different animal. He tries to pass it off like it's the same dog. It's a possum! You good? Like, where do you get a possum? So spicy? No. Ryan's dead. Before, I'm a big monster movie fan, and with Godzilla being one of my personal favorites. And when the latest film first came out, we did an effect to put a massive monster in our shot, which you can find that in the links below. But easily one of the coolest effects in any of the new Godzilla films is that atomic breath. So why not try it on a human? <laughs> First, when we were shooting this, we made sure to use practical lights to hit Josh with as soon as he made the motion for the blast. We had one giving a glow to him and the surroundings and one that was focused just on his mouth, since that is where the blast would be coming from. First, we tried one of our lights with black wrap for this, but that just did not work. So we just took a flashlight and wrapped it in a gel. I was also in the shot here, as you can see, so I could get close enough to him with the lights, but we were able to get a clean plate and mask that out easily enough since it was locked down. We also hit him with a bit of wind right at that moment too to add a little more interaction in camera. For that we used our leaf blower which we bought this years ago when we did that flash super speed effect and we've gotten plenty of mileage out of it since then. And while we were shooting we had the Nvidia Studio laptop with the Nvidia GeForce RTX GPU. And if you haven't seen these before Nvidia Studio laptops are laptops that are built with creators in mind. They have powerful GPUs that accelerate encoding video, rendering 3D models, processing photos, and so on. We talked about them on the show several times before because they are blazing fast and what we use. And this recent one Nvidia sent our way is the Razer Blade 15, which other than having a cool name, is an Nvidia Studio laptop purpose-built and tested specifically for content creation. You have vivid color displays, insanely fast memory and storage, and it is powered by Nvidia GeForce RTX GPUs, which if you know what a GPU does, that got you excited. And if you don't, the GPU can unlock or speed up AI powered features, of course, gives you faster performance. And for what we do in the video space, a solid GPU is an absolute must have. Plus, NVIDIA works directly with creative app publishers like Adobe and Blackmagic to optimize performance and stability. But this one here has a 15.6 inch screen and 16 gigs of RAM. And of course, the NVIDIA Studio driver. What I'm loving about having Having this is that it's so fast that we are piecing together and testing this sketch that we're shooting as we go, similar to what larger productions would do with the editor editing the footage as it comes in. A process like this isn't always possible with run and gun, but since we're shooting on our Blackmagic 6K Pro and the Ursa, we're recording right to an SSD drive so we can pop that right into the laptop and check the shots move on really quick. Mainly I wanted to be able to check out the final look and also the stabilization in this shot here. Again, we are shooting very run and gun, so I didn't want to add any extra gear. So I'm just all handheld and we still wanted this move from the throat to the eye. So I popped the camera into 6K to give some extra room to zoom in with that stabilization since we are finishing in 4K. But then I was able to toss it on and make sure we had the result before we moved on. So doing it this way didn't slow us down and let me make sure that we wouldn't have to reshoot anything the next day. I was also able to drop in this temp effect here on the side shot to make sure that it was looking the way we wanted it to. It's not the final by any means, but it's enough to get the general idea before we moved on. I'm also able to throw on an adjustment layer and my final look. I'm using Lumetri to throw on a LUT 
then some more customizing with that, and then finishing it all off with Film Convert Nitrate. The screen was great for grading on too. Really solid colors and contrast. It has a great balance. So in the end, it looked good on all the devices. There's nothing worse than when you can't trust your monitor. So that's another major plus there. After that, we just finished the entire sketch and this episode on the laptop. The thing is screaming fast. So it was great to just edit wherever I felt like sitting at the time. Josh and I also have to pass our episodes back and forth a lot. So with this, we're just passing the laptop to the other when one needs to take over. It's a fun and interesting workflow. Instead of this laptop being either of our main system, we use it as a project computer. Obviously, as I say this, we're still in the middle of the episode and trying that out, but so far it has been a really smooth way to work. But if you want to know more about these laptops, and you definitely do, check out the notes below for more links. But jumping into After Effects, we're going to drop our footage into a new comp and then add the clean plate. We'll mask this side of the frame and feather it to remove my body. To add glowing eyes, first create a null layer and duplicate. One for the left eye and one for the right. Then right click your footage, track and stabilize, track motion. Move the tracker over an area of the first eye and track. Once that's done, edit target and select one of the corresponding nulls and apply. Then do the same for the other eye, depending on your angle, if it is visible. Create a new white solid and roto a shape within the eye. Link this layer to the track null and enable motion. Play through and see if the mask needs any keyframes. We had to manually keyframe the beginning and the end to work with his sudden motion, as well as when his eyes shut. Then do the same with the other eye if needed, giving us this, which so far feels like a mix of Dr. Manhattan and a horror movie. Create an adjustment layer, roto to the eye area, feather it, and link to one of the tracks. Add a glow effect and alter the setting to your liking. We duplicated the glow a bunch of times, altering the settings to increase the radius and decrease the strength with each one. This glow is actually picking up on the blue from the practical light we use, but if you need to add or change your glow color, you can alter these settings and select whichever color you need. Our right eye wasn't picking up as much of the glow due to the size, so we duplicated the adjustment layer and made a new mask to that area, then changed the settings to be more focused and subtle for that eye. For the beam, first track the mouth the same way as before and apply it to a new mouth null. Create a new solid and move it over slightly so the edge goes off frame. Roto a rough shape for the beam, feather slightly, and link to the null. If you move the anchor point to start at the mouth, you can control rotation from this point too if your actor leans forward or back. Go to the first frame you want the beam to appear and move the layer to begin there. Add a keyframe for the mask and move it forward a couple of frames. Then change the mask to a shorter starting shape so that it looks like it suddenly blasts out. You'll want to do a similar thing for when the beam ends too. Add a fractal noise effect, lower the contrast, and lift the brightness to make it a bit softer. Then alt click the stopwatch for evolution and type in the expression time asterisk 300. This animates the evolution to change over time. Then under transform, alt click the stopwatch for the offset and type the expression value zero plus time asterisk 3000 value one. And also copy this for later. This will animate the movement going left to right. You can scale up the fractal noise and alter the expression number to change the speed if needed. The lower the number, the slower it moves. The higher, the faster. Next, add turbulent displace. Turbulent displace. Increase the complexity to add detail and lower the amount. Alt click the stopwatch for the offset and paste the same expression from before, only this time increasing the value to make it faster, giving us this. The turbulence is affecting the mouth area, which is knocking the beam out of position. So you can duplicate the beam and uncheck effects on the bottom layer, mask this mouth area and set the mask to intersect and then feather. Then draw a mask on the top layer set to subtract and feather again, fixing the mouth edge and adding this hot spot at the start of the beam. Then create a directional blur in the direction of the beam and increase the amount to fake motion blur. Now we're gonna add a glow effect with a high radius and change any settings to our liking. Next, add a curves effect to add color. For ours, we are lowering the red and raising the blue, then adding some brightness. We're gonna copy and paste both of these effects to the layer below too. For anyone who has the heat distortion plugin from Video Copilot, this is a great way to enhance the look.
look, so we will make a new adjustment layer and apply heat distortion with high speeds and direction to match, then mask the area around the beam and feather. Next, add a new adjustment layer with a glow effect and high radius. If you don't want the brightness blown out, you can change the operation from add to screen. To add some camera shake, drop this comp into a new comp and cut at the points where the beam starts and stops. For the beam section, alt click the position stopwatch, type wiggle 60 comma Eight, enable motion blur and scale up each layer slightly. For some lens effects, you can use texture like this free one from unsplash.com, set to screen, then change the color to match, add a wiggle expression to the transparency to make it flicker and mask out any areas you don't like. For some final touches, we used optical flares and magic bullet looks to add some anamorphic flares, though it isn't necessary, just an added touch we used. And remember, you can easily change the fractal noise or turbulent displacement scales and speeds, or even the mass shape to alter the look of the beam. Or for anyone who has our beam assets, which are also in the Extinction collection, you can use these tinted to the same color either as additions to what we've made here or completely replace the beam instead to get a variety of looks. So that's it for today. Everything that we talked about, including the new laptop we got from NVIDIA can be found in the notes below. Also make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you know when we put up new content. And don't forget to write, shoot, edit, repeat.